and, and I mean that primarily for, for the people that are here today. We have an average annual salary of $24,000 a year. Um, we're treated poorly by brands. We're publishing one review per week for brands. Brand outreach is either off target or it's, uh, it's non-existent or it's shifted off to an intern, someone who's making maybe as much as we are as bloggers or maybe just a little bit less. 14% um, of us violate federal regulations, which were recently enacted. <laughs> um, only 56% disclose that. You weren't my science teacher or something you're not creating. So, I mean, honestly, what, what, is, what is the state of the blogosphere right now? And I know that you have, a, you have a job to do in terms of presenting this data, and I mean, you did an excellent job here. But if this was an annual checkup, would the doctor say that we're in poor health and we better do something fast? Or is there, do we, do we need a personal trainer? Can we fix these problems ourselves? So it's a great question, and, and the analogy is nice too. Um, should the doctor be concerned? It all depends on the state that the uh, patient was in before this checkup. So from my perspective, and, and from what the study shows and looking at this year over year, the trend is actually headed in the right direction. The stats still speak to opportunities for major improvements that we do have control over. But I think one of the most um, inspiring sort of data points that we're seeing is just the interactions brands are now having with bloggers. Where before, you know, when I started at Technorati four years ago, there was this taboo around UGC and no brand wanted to be around a, 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 an area where it was unmoderated in their minds or potential for, flam, for flaming and that kind of stuff. And so they were scared of this environment. And they weren't looking at you guys as professionals. They were looking at you as all hobbyists. You were personal journaling, your life. That wasn't something important to a brand. What we've been doing in Technorati is nothing but evangelizing the importance of your influence on your audience and how well that's grown. And we've seen the advertiser adoption and understanding of this to the point that they are now making you spoke bloggers. They are looking at blogger ambassador programs. They are looking to pay you for your opinion and pay you to, to write something about um, a topic of interest to their target audience or about their product or service. Does it still have a long way to go? Hell yeah. Um, but, but I think the trend is, 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 is actually a positive one, um, which is important. What does it say about us, though, that if our number one influencer is other bloggers, are, are we all just sort of belly button gazing? Are we all just kind of just staring down and going, look at mine, Ooh, you've got one too. I mean, is this, are we, are we actually, I mean, are any of our thoughts original? Or is, everybody, or is everybody just sort of feeding off of what everybody else is doing? I mean, you take a look at the number of retweets versus original tweets, and. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems that content curation and content marketing mm -hmm. now says, oh, you need to be retweeting and curating content. So is that problematic? Um, yes and no. The, the, it's problematic for the bloggers um, spending a lot of time doing that. And I mean, the bloggers that are sit there and regurgitating um, others' content, uh, others content instead of adding their own. But what you'll see, and I think most of you do from your audiences, your audiences are going to determine whether or not that's relevant. So, you know, to the extent that you bring new and original ideas to the table, audiences will respect and follow and stay loyal to you. When you're just regurgitating and, and creating an echo chamber for what's already been said, you're going to lose followers. There's too much noise out there. So why, you know, continue adding to that noise with stuff that isn't your own? Um, I think there's a trend that uh, bloggers are looking at basically being more sort of focused on, on what their content is and what their sort of uh, topic of, of specialty is so that they can really start to be subject matter experts for it as opposed to you know, know everything about everything and just be constantly keeping um, a lot of content out there whether it's theirs or not. I received a, a pitch the other day from a, a public relations agency that thought that I would find it um, newsworthy that 10 leading um, bloggers feel that the economy isn't really in the tank, but instead it's rebounding. And I went out and I took a look at who these leading bloggers were, and they were all actually, their, their bios all said that they were economists. And so when I contacted the PR rep back, I said, now, are these economists or are they bloggers? And she said, oh, they're bloggers. What, what is a blog? I mean, just specifically from your standpoint, um, you know, is, is Huffington Post a blog? Was it ever a blog? Is it still a blog? Is a website that has comment-enabled content that's presented in reverse chronicle order a blog? How do you guys define a blog, and how do you define a blogger? And in this particular case, are these people just economists who happen to write, and where it appears is on a, a website that can also be called a blog? 
So it's, it's, it is an interesting question because I think where blogs started and where they are today, there's so much gray area between um, a, even a traditional news source and a blog because you have investigative bloggers who are out there, you know, taking facts and actually writing pretty much what traditional journalists do. Um, and then you also have traditional journalists having their own blog and writing opinions. So there is a sort of gray area as far as the content itself describing what a blog or blog isn't. Um, where blogs started from a definition standpoint was, um, you know, basically in the beginning, it was back in 96 or, or whatnot, um, that uh, it was an area of a website that would be updated frequently. So as opposed to, you know, creating an article and that becomes static and then you move on to the next article and that becomes static content, a blog was a place you updated um, regularly. In addition, it was something that had a reverse chronology um, of, of, of how it was organized. And that was the only definition really of a blog. It's come to mean many different things to many people, but I think it's really, uh, we define it more about the independence that a, um, an author will have, and it can be a combination of authors, but the more independent they are, um, as far as where their opinions and thought leadership and everything else comes from, that to us is more of a true definition of a blog. It's an open forum for them to not be constrained by a publisher or whatever else about the subject matter they're gonna talk about or about approval of being able to say certain things. But when you say open forum, is it a two-way forum? Is it a two-way forum of communication? Definitely. In, in other words, like Seth God, it, it, mm -hmm. is, does he have a blog? Or does he just have a website where he presents content in reverse chronological order? Because commenting is, is not enabled. Yeah, it, 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 commenting doesn't need to define a blog or not. I think it defines a good blog because I think you want to have that social interaction with your audience and be able to um, get the feedback from your audience in a way that helps you shape better the content. But some people don't like to do that, and that's okay too, right? It doesn't make them less of a blogger. Because